Here I am in darkest Africa. We're very close to the natural habitat of the South African thermal. I'm told that they traditionally like to mate in these gullies. It's a little bit early, but we should be seeing them coming out later. And when two get together, you get this powerful eruption of lift. It'll be interesting to see what happens when you put a beautiful, delicate butterfly paraglider into these wild African thermals. Perhaps we'll see something we've never seen before. Hey guys, UK just wasn't working in the middle of winter, so a bit of a scene change for the channel. We are in the Western Cape, South Africa, and we've come to one of the best sites for thermal flying at Kadusi, which is straight away from Cape Town up the N7 and up the mountain pass and Ta-da! A new launch site made by the owner Henry. And it's 11 o'clock. It's the last day of 2019. And I'm sure we're gonna find some thermals. So this will be a good test for the Cure 2. I've had some flights here, but today my ambition is just to get up high and thrash the glider around and let it get thrashed around and get a good testing of how it handles strong summer thermic conditions. We're gonna ridge that way. I'm gonna try, I think, get up and go into wind, which will give it a good test of the glider. It's gonna be hard. I'm gonna to need to be on bar a lot. It's hard hitting because the prevailing wind comes in from there and uh, we'll see how far we can get. And then hopefully I've got to get back here because my car's up here and I'm on my ace, so idea is to do an out and return and come back for a New Year's Eve under the stars of Africa.
pretty strong midsummer thermic conditions here at wonderful citrus Dale in South Africa and it's given it a really good workout I've had some strong headwind to fight against I've had a inversion layer uh, five to six meters a second thermals and some different airflow going back into the big mountains at the back coming back into the valley it's all great good test of the glider so what do I think very cool I really like it I think it's uh, one to definitely have a look at right now in the C class. Performance is apparently right at the top of the class. Um, I had not a single soul to test against here. I was just flying on my own. I had all the mountains to play in. So all I can tell you about the wing is more about the handling, which is great. Really sweet, um, a very light brake pressure, soft and sweet turn but it's responsive, it's not spongy. You know, you don't need a lot of brake and you can, you can fly delicately. Um, you can put in a lot of brake if you want to. It doesn't have any kind of tendency to spin. Uh, there's a lot of protection in the corners and I found it was agile. Um, one of those gliders that if you're blasting along on bar and you hit a strike or something, you can immediately come off the bar and hook it around and it gives you a really nice responsive turn. You're getting your turn going, you can turn tight um, you can get it to accelerate a bit. It doesn't drop the wing a lot, just enough to give you that freedom of movement. And it's the way that it moves through the air that I think really makes it outstanding. So this is Cardusi on the top of the N7 pass. What an awesome place. So the launch is up there. Just had a good flight. And uh, yeah, what can I tell you about the, the Cure 2? It's ideal for pilot. <laughs> It's, um, it gives you that free flow feeling. So uh, surfers will love this glider. It's a, a kind of perfect for, for the, the C-Class in my mind. I think in the C-Class glider designers have got the freedom to do what they want with a wing. They don't have to trim it back and hold it back so that it passes through a B certification, which means they can just tweak the aerofoil and make it perfect, make it a really nice flying wing and not worry so much about reining it back. And I think this Cure 2 hits the sweet spot in that C-Class. I think this is a fair test of the Cure 2. What a beauty! Overall a great glider if you're stepping up to the C-Class kind of mid C, I would say in pilot demands, um, maybe towards the top end um, in SIV situations where you've got quite a bit of energy to deal with. Um, but <laughs> review bombing. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> when the thermals are strong, punchy, uh, conditions are full on, summer conditions, mountain conditions. Um, I did find in the UK where it's all sort of uh, very light, mincy, mincy sort of stuff, 
that isn't its forte. Um, it just comes alive when the conditions are stronger. And then you get an advantage. I think uh, um, the other advantage that I noticed was that the wing was very calm and comforting. So I was flying around and it was probably pretty rough. I mean, I think other pilots might have said it was really rough. Um, I wasn't getting that from the wing. Uh, the wing was making it easy to fly in those conditions and I wasn't finding that I had to uh, manage the glider much. The, the active flying demands are quite low. Something to do with the way the wing is just a little bit behind from vertical. That's the feeling. It's like it's, it's just a little bit limited and it's going through the, the different lift and sink. I didn't find that the wing was jumping ahead much. I didn't have to you know, catch that dive and constantly manage that energy. So it gives you a really chilled out, really calm, easy ride through active sky um, without being dull. Um, the wings got some feedback and I'd say there it was on the muted side. The feedback from the air was very subtle. I could feel it, but it definitely wasn't a talkative glider with like lots of information. It's fairly muted. Occasionally you get the, the flap, the wingtip hits out, bang, bangs out just in the corner. And uh, I got one or two asymmetrics. They didn't bang out, they sort of went in and I had to pump them out. But it didn't disturb the glider much. The central section seems very solid. I've been riding on bar, mostly half bar, sometimes full. Haven't felt like it's on edge. And uh, yeah, sorted, this one's a winner. This is my happy place. It's the last day of 2019. Join me for sundowners. We've got a, a bottle of the wolf trap. And we're up on the pass overlooking the Swartland. What a beautiful part of the world. This place is awesome. It's flyable most days. And I think I was the only one flying today. <laughs> this whole valley, there's nobody around. Approved. Who's it for? A pilot that is ready for the C-Class. If you're not sure, Stay on a high B for another season. When you, um, you feel like you've mastered the high B class, you've got everything out of it that you can, and you're looking for that next step, when you're ready for the C class, you definitely, without a doubt, should be doing an SIV course before you're going up to the C class. I would say you should be on about oh, 150 hours. That's a good place maybe 200 hours. We're talking thermic flying, not just ridge soaring. Um, it depends on your ability and where you fly and how much airtime you get. But that's a, a, a ballpark figure for a good place for getting onto the Cure. SIV course, 150 thermic hours of flying. Um, you've probably got, I don't know, two or three years of flying experience. Depends on how much you fly. And you're looking for something that's going to give you a good glide, the ability to stay accelerated and still have good glide, and a good trim speed, and something that's got a really wonderful flow feeling in the air. Then you're looking for the Cure 2. It's also suited to pilots that have become a bit overwhelmed with a high D two-liner, that needs a lot of active flying and a little active input, and they just want to have fun again and chill out. 
but still be able to do the search, glide, climb up, race. It'll give you all of that in a very comforting package. So it's very nice for more experienced pilots wanting to downgrade to the C-Class. You won't feel limited, but you will get that comfort and sweet feeling on the wing. And I could fly for hours and hours more in midsummer full-on conditions and I wasn't getting tired. So it's a very good glider for long days, strong conditions, big climbs, big mountain flying. It holds itself together very well. It's got a nice kind of tension in it. It keeps itself open. I didn't feel that it was particularly prone to collapses. It's got a nice resistance and a nice tension that allowed me to feel confident in sporty and rowdy air. It's also a beautiful design. I love the color scheme. It just pops anywhere that you film it. So if looks are important, the Cure 2 is for you. Thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Cure 2. I know I did. It's been awesome coming to South Africa. 2019 is done. 2020, here we come. Arrua! Cheers to 2019. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support on our channel. Thanks to our patrons. Thanks to Flybubble. Thanks to the guys that bought stuff in the shop. And I'm going to see you at the end of 2019. Looking forward to 2020 when I'll see you again. Cheers. That is the cure.